In the previous lesson, I went ahead and mentioned that we will be talking about recursion in this video, but we're actually going to be talking about return statements and how those work in functions because I absolutely forgot about those. And let's get started immediately by creating a sample function, which is going to be add numbers, which as usual will add a plus b. And we are going to calculate a value which is going to equal a plus b. Now what we did until here is print the value. So we did all of this and then we went ahead and added the numbers. And when we run the program, it gave us the output. The problem with this is if we print the value, we won't be able to use it later. And that makes it kind of useless in this scenario. So another thing we can do is go ahead and turn this into a return function. So all we have to do is specify return at the bottom and we need to specify what we want to return. We can either return a value or we can actually also return an expression such as a plus b. It's completely up to you what you return. You can return lists, you can return strings, you can return anything that you've computed inside a function. Now you're going to notice that when we run the program, we're not going to have anything printed because we didn't specify that anything should be printed. But if we go ahead and surround this by parentheses and print the value, we're going to print three because when we call this function, it's going to return three as the value or the value of whatever we calculate inside here. So if we insert a three, now it's going to return five and five is going to be the value stored inside here. So we're going to print five and we can also go ahead and type in value equals add numbers and we can do 10 plus 20 if you want. And now we can go ahead and print this value. And doing this just means we can have it for later reference, which is always a good thing in case we want to further process that number. So it's very helpful to know about return statements. Now we're going to go ahead and add one more function, which is going to be called number checker. And this is going to check whether it is odd or even the number. So we're going to insert a number and we're going to use a shorthand if else block. And to do this, we have to write what we want to return if the statement is true. So we're going to return true if the number modulus two is equal to zero, else we are going to return false if this is not the case. So as you can see, it's a very simple number checker. It literally took one line and we returned the expression itself, which is either going to return true or false depending on the number we insert. So here we can create another variable called is even, and we're going to use the number checker and we're going to insert the value that we are processing. Now we can go ahead and print both the value and also the is even. So if the number is even, we're going to get true. Otherwise, if the number is odd, we're going to have false. So as you can see, 30 is true because it is even, it has no remainder, so we get zero. But if we go ahead and change this to nine, we're going to get a number of 29. So it's going to go ahead and say, hey, we have a remainder of one, this is an odd number. But that's actually all I wanted to cover before moving on to recursion. 